Hi everyone, my name is Luis Cabrera. I am a senior director of product management working on AI services. I have been given the impossible task to cover a lot about AI services or whole family of AI services in just you know, 30, 40 minutes. So let's get started. I'm gonna ask you a question. Um, do you have what it takes to solve a problem through AI? We mentioned that artificial intelligence is very powerful, that it can solve a lot of our problems, but can you actually solve one of these problems? In general, we ask this question out of our customers. And uh, in the typical case, we ask them to have four things. Uh, a clear problem, they have to have data because you know, usually this is a data science problem. They need someone to do the work, usually a data scientist, and then compute to do the work. So we are going to um, look at each of the areas uh, that we're working on and, sorry, each of the areas that or, uh, or requirements that they need. For a clear problem, we all have a problem. Uh, but sometimes we need to think about it for a second so that we can tune and identify the, the specific problem that we want to solve, right? So not usually a, a huge deal. It, it may take a little bit of thinking, but most of our customers, uh, you know, can can solve this. In terms of data, we are all surrounded by data. We, uh, you know, we have data everywhere. Now we have telemetry, logs, you know, app data. Um, so, so usually the data is there, but sometimes the hard part here is finding the, the exact data or the valuable data or even cleaning the data that we need in order to solve a particular problem. Um, some problems also require a lot of data, and that may be a challenge. What about the data scientists? Uh, those are hard to find, and because they are such scarce resources, you know, they they are uh, they are charging a, a, a high price for their uh, for their services. So so this is a big challenge for many of uh, the people that we talk to. They may not have a data science team or they may not have data scientists that have the experience uh, required to solve a particular problem. And then the last one is uh, compute. The good news there is that this one is an easy one. Uh, usually people are aware of cloud compute and uh, you know, uh, OCI, for instance, can help you uh, here provide all the, all the computational needs uh, that you have. So given this, this context, we, as part of the Oracle AI um, team, we want to make sure that we enable you to solve these problems, enable, enable you to, for instance, uh, get, get the, or get the value out of your data. We want to make sure that you can uh, solve problems, sometimes even without a data scientist. And the way that we're doing this is by having essentially two layers of services. The first ones at the bottom in this slide are machine learning services. For instance, OCI Data Science is a tool for data scientists to build any kind of model. So, so if you have a data science team in your organization, you may want to look into OCI Data Science. We can also run machine learning uh, scripts in our Oracle database. And we have tools such, such as uh, OCI Data Labeling that enable for a quick labeling of, of data so that you can train a model. So, this layer, machine learning services, once again, is, is generally the, the set of tools that your data scientists will use. But what if you don't have a data scientist? In that case, you can use our AI services, which is what we are going to spend most of the time today talking about. Um, these are services that are pre-trained, uh, that can be customized easily without the, the need of a data scientist, and that you can use. So we have uh, several of these. We have digital assistant, we have speech, language, vision, document understanding, and then decision services such as anomaly detection and forecast. So once again, these don't require any data scientists. And, and we have trained them with uh, um, industry uh, relevant data so that, uh, so that they are um, you know, valuable for the type of problems that you want to solve. So, you know, we select our data for specific industry scenarios. Um, also, in the cases where you need to customize it, you can bring your data, customize them, 
but you don't need to be a, a, an expert on, on vision algorithms or, or natural language processing uh, to train uh, these services. So we make it very easy for you to, to customize uh, many of these AI services. Um, we're very proud of our uh, high quality data scientists and, uh, you know, like they're constantly measuring the quality of each of our, of our capabilities and improving them. So we're very proud of our AI services. Let's talk about each of them one by one. I'm going to start with Digital Assistant, which um, has been a product that has been around for a while. I am not going to go into a lot of detail. There is a session, LRN3602. I, you can see the, the, um, the number of the session on the top right corner of this slide that you can go to in order to learn more about Digital Assistant. But suffice it to say that you can use Digital Assistant whenever you need to create a chatbot or a system that needs to understand the intent of a command. Um, you know, like so, so you can create uh, classes of intents. ODA can also identify entities specific for, for particular intents. You can create dialogues. So it's a very powerful tool and it really deserves its own presentation. So I recommend you go to LRN3602 to learn about all the capabilities of Digital Assistant. Then we have our speech service. Many of the problems that, that uh, we start, and even as I am communicating with you right now, I am using my own, my own speech, right? I am sending a, a, an energy wave uh, through the system that you can hear, and uh, you know, your brain is making sense out of all this. But if, what if we wanted to use this type of information uh, to extract insights out of it? What if, for instance, you had um, uh, support calls, and you want them to understand, hey, what are the key topics? What are the, uh, the key elements that are being mentioned in these support calls? Usually, what you do is you, tra you transcribe the speech into language, into text, essentially, so that you can process the text. Um, once again, this is a pre-trained model. It doesn't require any data science expertise. All of our AI services are supported in a variety of languages. We have SDKs for Python, JavaScript, uh, .NET, and so forth. So we have many, many SDKs that you can use, uh, as well as REST APIs. And um, in the case of speech, they will take a, usually like an audio or even a video file that it will extract the, the, the speech audio from, and then uh, it will transcribe it so that we can uh, further process. Usually, the next step is to use OCI language, uh, which is our service to uh, process natural language, or essentially text, right? Think of all the types of problems that, that deal with natural language processing. Once again, maybe you have customer feedback, uh, such as product reviews or, or support tickets, all center interactions. Anytime that you're interacting with a customer, it's either through speech or through or through natural language, right? Uh, the beauty of this is that natural language, even though it's it's really unstructured, it's it's very rich and powerful. So we want to extract insights from from the natural language content that we have. Um, you, you may have contracts, for instance, or, or financial documents um, that you may want to parse and understand. Um, so OCI language has several capabilities. Some of them that I described here are uh, text analytics. This refers to taking a piece of text and extracting insights such as, hey, what are the key phrases that are being mentioned the most? What are entities that are being mentioned in the text? For instance, uh, names of people or uh, names of companies or organizations, locations, uh, places, times, uh, dates, right? So these are all very important. And, and depending on the context of the, of the problem that you're trying to solve, you may want to identify a particular type of entity. We also can detect, for instance, what language is being used when somebody uh, types a piece of text so that you can route uh, the, the task to a particular uh, uh, channel or individual. Um, we can also extract 
personal identifiable information. This is more and more important in order to respect people's privacy as we further analyze information. So these are just some examples of pre-trained models that we have that you can consume. You can also translate context. This is a new capability that just that we recently released, where you can translate um, from and to 20 different languages. Uh, this uses state-of-the-art uh, neural machine translation. Uh, super amazing. Uh, and uh, I'll give you a demo of that in just a few minutes. We also have the ability for you to train your own custom models. For instance, custom models for classification or entity extraction. Uh, an example of classification may be a situation where you have, a, a let's say, a ticket and you want to route it to the, to the right department. Uh, let's say um, maybe it's the hardware department or the software department or, or uh, I don't know, human resources or whatever, right? So you could, you could imagine bringing all the examples or, lay or, or pieces of text or records that you have processed in the past where maybe a human had to route it in a particular direction and having the system learn uh, from, from what the human did in the past, train a machine learning model so that in the future, this process can be completely automated. Um, let me actually give you a demo that uh, uses both speech and language. All right. So I am going to play uh, just a few seconds of this video. Uh, I am not going to go through the whole video for you. But I want you to just pay attention. There is a little bit of background music while people are speaking. So, so let's just uh, play it from the beginning. We want to do what we can to help create a sustainable future focused on making clean energy happen. We think natural gas is a big piece of that. We do gathering, processing, and transmission across the United States. We transport about 30%. Okay, let's just pause right there. So you can hear the ting, 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 ting. There's a little bit of music. Uh, there are different people speaking. Sometimes it's a man, sometimes it's a woman. They may have different accents and so forth. Um, so uh, you may not remember the exact words, but uh, I'm going to show you right here. I um, Actually, let me navigate so you can see how I got it. So if you go to analytics and AI, you can click on speech. Uh, that will bring you to the speech service. And in my specific uh, case, I already transcribed this using OCI speech so that uh, um, you don't have to worry too much uh, about waiting for me to do it. It took uh, 31 seconds of processing time. And we can see the actual transcription result. Uh, we want to do what we can, sorry, what we can to help create a sustainable future, focus on making clean energy happen. We think natural gas is a big piece of what we do, blah, 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 right? So you can see this is really high quality transcription, right? Like despite the music and, and different people talking, we were able to transcribe it. Um, imagine a, a scenario where maybe I wanna uh, take the content of a video and uh, I wanna make, make it or enable people that speak other languages to actually be able to understand what is being said on the, on the video. So in this case, a first step would be this transcription step. And uh, by the way, I can even see at what time uh, particular uh, words were mentioned. Uh, let me, here you can see, for instance, the first word is we, and this is the exact uh, second 2.59 where it started, it ended at 2.88, it's a word, right? So um, just like that, we have that for every word, so we could literally be, be putting the transcript as people are speaking in the video. But, uh, but what I want to do in this case is I want to actually translate that content. And uh, in order to do that, I want to um, actually go to um, my other browser. OK, I am on my other browser. And um, here I want to go to uh, language. So, so I'm going to just copy the text that we saw a second ago. We want, uh, uh, we want to do what we can to help uh, create a sustainable future, yada, yada, yada. And using our OCI language service, the second that I was talking about, 
I am going to actually translate the content just so you can see the quality. So I, so this is the text that we just extracted out of that video. I speak Spanish, so I'm just going to translate it to Spanish so I can read the result. And let's actually translate it. This is using uh, neural machine uh, translation. And it says, queremos hacer lo que podamos para ayudar a crear un futuro sostenible centrado en hacer que la energía limpia suceda. I don't think that I could have done a better job as a human translating this sentence than this uh, neural uh, machine translation uh, network did. That's really cool. This is very exciting. We're very proud of the work uh, that, uh, that our language team has done in order to, um, to essentially automatically translate content from, from one language to another. And you can imagine now, right, now that I have the Spanish text, you know, like uh, people that couldn't quite understand what was being said in English, you know, like uh, now, now they have access to this. In a world where, uh, you know, like we're really in a, in, a, in a global community now, this is becoming more and more important. Of course, this can all be done programmatically. I am just showing it to you here uh, in order to save a little bit of time. Language as well has text analytics capabilities. So for instance, imagine that uh, I am just going to insert some text to analyze right here. Um, this is, let's say I am uh, complaining to folks at a hotel. Um, it's a comment on a, on, a, on a forum or something like that, where I have saying, I have been struggling to use the application to reserve a room at the hotel. Listen, I think the Paradise Inn is a great place, but you really need to fix the app. My name is Luis Cabrera, and I need a deluxe room on December 23rd, 2022. I will be arriving, if I can type, there you go. If I will be arriving at 2 p.m. from Spain. So if I analyze that, this is just an example of the types of things that we can do with text analytics as part of OCI language. We can detect the language. We can automatically classify the text. This has to do with hotels and accommodations. Of course, it does. And um, we can identify entities, like I was telling you earlier. Like, for instance, Paradise Inn is a, a location or a facility. Luis Cabrera is the name of a person. Uh, there is a date here, a specific time when he is arriving, and a location that he, that he is traveling from. So all this could be very useful if I am um, essentially processing all of this uh, data automatically and I need to understand, hey, like what is being discussed here? Like who, who are the entities? Who are the people that are uh, essentially reaching out to me? I, in the case of key phrase extraction, this is, think of this as automatically adding hashtags or what this is about. This text was very small and you know, it was just uh, like three, three sentences. So uh, most of the entities there have about the same ranking but you know, this is related to Paradise Inn. It's a great place, you know, like it has to do with the application and so forth. And uh, last but not least, we also do sentiment analysis and we do aspect-based level sentiment, which is my, my favorite. We do docu document and sentence level sentiment as well, but I wanna focus on aspect. Essentially, the highlighted terms right here are the ones that I am talking about. I am talking negatively about the application um and uh, you know i couldn't reserve a room uh, at the hotel right i also said good things about paradise scene i said it's a great place but you need to fix the application so once again i am using negative language and there is a bunch of other neutral text around so you can imagine how this could be very useful in understanding what our customers are thinking so let me go back to the to the deck so that you can learn about a real customer that is using sentiment analysis uh, to better understand their customers. So now Optics is, a, is, a, is one of the customers or one of the users of OCI language. And in, in their specific case, they had accumulated thousands of comments from customers and they wanted to gain insights from, from all these comments, right? So they have hundreds of uh, of stores and you know like every time that a, a customer went to a store they will they will leave some some feedback or, or comments and um, but you know these are thousands and thousands of records right so it's very hard for a human to try to identify patterns but using OCI language they were able to 
identify, hey, what are the key phrases being mentioned here, right? What is the overall sentiment? How does sentiment compare from store to store? Um, how does it, it change over time, right? Like maybe we have been improving the way that we're treating our customers or our products, or, or maybe we have some areas to improve. So um, they use um, OCI language and they also um, analyze or visualize the output uh, so that uh, they could actually understand what was going on. Um, one example of this is, um, is well, or rather, uh, the architecture that they use looks something like this. Essentially, they take all their data, they run it through our AI service, uh, which in this case is OCI language. Uh, usually, you, if you want to read from different data sources, you need something to integrate uh, the input and, and orchestrate calling the service. So this was done through OCI data integration. And then you are able to pump the output to, to a database, uh, autonomous data warehouse in this case, and then you can visualize it with tools like Oracle Analytics Cloud. So this is an example of, of the architecture to be used to solve this specific problem. All right, let's move on to the next uh, type of services. So we have vision and document understanding. Document understanding is a new service. It's in limited availability. Both of these products work on, on essentially dealing one in one dealing with images and the other one dealing with files in general, right? Documents, right? Think of PDF documents as an example, or um, you know, like we want to be able to understand any type of document. That's really our vision, right? So a lot of insights are locked today in different types of documents or images. So these products allow us to unlock or extract the, the, the insights that are visually represented there, or in some cases, you know, like just simply in a different format, uh, so that we can uh, further, uh, uh, you know, do analysis or understand what we're dealing with. And I'll show you some examples of real customers that are using. As a matter of fact, now Optics, which was the customer that I told you about previously, they are using, or they are actually in the middle of looking at using OCI Vision um, to try to, because they are taking pictures of, uh, of, of people's eyes, right? To try to classify, hey, is this person at a risk of diabetes, as an example, right? So these are the types of problems that uh, we can solve with OCI Vision and, and document understanding. In the case of OCI Vision, we can we have pre-built models, but you can also train your own custom models, right? So in the case of now optics, uh, you know the, the process to solve that problem would be to train a custom model given the images that they have, and uh, essentially this is a, a classification problem. So they will have to have labels as to like, hey, this person is at risk of uh, of uh, diabetes, or or you know like or they, or it's a healthy eye or whatever, right? And then based on that, train the system to recognize uh, these patterns. So you can trade custom models, but we also have pre-built models. So uh, for, uh, for example, the image on the right, we can identify, hey, this is a, there is, in this image, there is a car, uh, you know, it's a beautiful day. This is um, image classification, essentially, right? We can say what's going on inside the image. And we can also do object detection where we can actually identify specific objects, for instance, the tire in this vehicle, or we could say like, oh, there is a tire right here, or there is a license plate or a windshield, right? So we can um, identify specific objects as well. Um, the, the two images below that I'm showing here are examples of custom classification. So for instance, uh, for manufacturing, you may want to train a model to identify uh, a particular object, such as a capacitor or a resistor or a uh, the example below is uh, like maybe there is a, a, a missing, uh, you know, you can see the hole here where, where there should have been a, a knot and a bolt, right? So these are the types of problems that you can train using custom vision as well. In the case of document understanding, once again, this is a new service, it's in limited availability. Um, and the, the name of the game here is, hey, let's take all kinds of documents, uh, I don't know, invoices, receipts, 
uh, driver's licenses, passports, uh, you know, tables, uh, and we want to be able to extract the keys, uh, the key information in each of these different types of documents. So we have pre-built models to be able to understand this type of information. We can also, um, you can also train custom uh, uh, document classification models. You can um, uh, detect the language of a particular document, or obviously you can recognize the text uh, in a document as well. So these are some examples of the types of documents that we can handle. And uh, so let me actually show you a, a demo of, of, actually, before I go into the demo, sorry, uh, let me show you a real case. Uh, in this case, Outfront Media, this is a company that is, um, essentially their business is the billboard business, right? And this is a super interesting scenario because they essentially were, um, imagine if you want to understand um, like what is being placed on, uh, on different uh, billboards and, and like who owns different billboards or who is uh, displaying ads on different billboards, right? So, so Alfred in this case, you know, like they're able to drive a vehicle and, and take images uh, as they are driving and then they created a custom classifier that can identify, hey, this billboard belongs to Outfront, or this billboard belongs to one of the competitors of Outfront, right? And essentially now they have a, a digital map in a sense of, hey, like who is displaying what where, and that gives them a competitive advantage uh, because they can quickly understand uh, what's happening, you know, in their in their space. So very interesting problem, and uh, and it's just an example of you know a, a, another company using some of our AI services um, uh, to be more clever. All right, now for real, now we'll go into the demo, and for this demo, um, there is a problem that we always have, right? As we come to a conference like Cloud World, usually you have to uh, turn in your receipts or uh, or at least enter, you know, like hey, how much did you spend on, on dinner or whatever. So I'm going to show you how you can do that very easily with, uh, with uh, the services. OK, so we are going to um, go to Analytics and AI. And then I'm going to click on Vision right here, which has this capability. Uh, it has had it for a while, but now we're moving it to, to document understanding as, as we introduce these new services. And um, in this case, I am going to uh, select a file. In this case, I had a, a receipt that I took uh, at the airport when I was traveling. Uh, I ate at Qdoba. And uh, I essentially want to understand, hey, automatically extract what's the total or the subtotal for this. So, so you can see here, it's a little green called uh, receipt. But I can see that it says payment here, and it's sixteen dollars and thirty-two cents. So if I go to key value here, uh, this is the pre-built uh, receipt model. It can identify, for instance, who is the merchant? It's Qdoba at the airport, right? Uh, the address, uh, the time, the transaction date, and the part that I care about the most, right? The the total was automatically extracted. Even though it said payment on the other side, right? It, it understands that, you know, that's the total, right? So we were able to extract structured data from unstructured content. And this would simplify, you know, now I can just literally take a picture of the receipt, submit it, and then I don't have to fill a bunch of forms uh, that are essentially just doing what the, what the model uh, is able to extract at red. This is an example of being able to extract content out of a particular type of document. OK, let's go back to the presentation. Last but not least, I want to talk about uh, anomaly detection and forecasting. These deal with a different type of data. Uh, usually, these are dealing with uh, time series. Uh, so think of anomaly detection as trying to find something weird or wrong in uh, data that comes from, for instance, a sensor or a set of sensors. Right, uh, so you could imagine maybe I am monitoring uh, a set of assets, uh, pressure, temperature, or a log, right? And uh, maybe I want to identify something is strange. Maybe a, a, a 
I don't know, like let's say I have a sensor in an elevator and, and I can detect that it's behaving weird, then I can fix that elevator or do predictive maintenance on that elevator before it breaks, right? So that's one of the reasons to do this. In another case, maybe there is something strange, like uh, think about an, analyzing like um, financial data, right? I could probably identify that there is some fraudulent behavior if Let's say I never go shopping on Sundays, and then all of a sudden just realize that there is a, you know, uh, I don't know, like a ten thousand uh, um, dollar transaction on on a Sunday uh, for me, right? That would be very unusual. So the point is that anomaly detection can use time series data from from more than one signal, um, and identify um, uh, essentially the patterns that are normal and the patterns and the patterns that are abnormal in order to identify this irregular behavior. Um, so it is a, we, our service uh, does a lot more than, you know, the actual processing. There is a lot that has to happen before the processing actually occurs. Uh, so for instance, you may need to impute values that are missing. You may need to unquantize data. Like I'm, I'm showing some of the examples here where like, in this line right here, there are values that are missing in some cases. So, uh, in this other signal, the data is very quantized. So that means you know, like there are specific kind of discrete values that it can have. Um, and you know, like the sometimes uh, the signals correlate to each other, right? Like uh, let's say I have several temperature sensors in different places. You know, there may be some correlation between them, right? Even though they are in different locations in a, in a system. Um, anomaly detection can deal both with univariate or a single variable and multivariate scenarios where it understands the relationship between these different uh, uh, time series. And um, so we're using state-of-the-art technology, all kinds of patterns that have gone into this, and uh, we can provide an estimation of the value in order to assess, you know, like how normal or abnormal that may be. So let me actually go back to the demo and uh, I'm going to go to analytics and AI. And then I am going to click on anomaly detection right here. And I essentially had created ahead of time, um, uh, I had trained a model and, um, and I had used some test data to, to visualize it. I just want to give you an idea of you know, what this looks like. So for these specific sensors right here, it identified that there are some anomalies here. So it says like, it says like, hey, look, the estimated value here should have been higher. And, uh, you know, these are, this is where the anomaly exists, right? So it found a few places where there is an anomaly. Um, and this has to do with the correlation between the different signals and, and you know, like as a, as a user, I could go back now and, and, and check, hey, what happened at a particular time? That may have caused this anomaly. Is this worth further investigating or not? Uh, another case where we can apply a time series uh, understanding or, or AI services that deal with time series is forecasting, as I mentioned. This one is a little bit easier to understand, right? Given what happened in the past, I want to predict the future in a signal. And this could certainly it could apply to sensors where I could predict what is going to happen in the in the future, but most likely I want to apply this to, let's say, uh, for instance, I may have some some resource and, and that resource may be, um, sorry, there may be a certain demand for this resource that I want to predict in the future so that I can be ready for the actual demand, right? If I um, imagine that I uh, sell something, right? If I can predict exactly what the demand will be in the future, then I will stock just on that, and I will not have uh, inventory just sitting around. Uh, and if I if I predict too little, right, like uh, uh, then I will have the opposite problem where I may not be able to make a sale. So I really want to have this magic ball that tells me the future because that will save me money, that will make my business more efficient. But this could apply to everything, right? Call center agents. Uh, uh, different types of assets, compute. We use it internally to actually predict how much compute OCI will use as an example, right? Um, financial data, so so very, very useful service uh, forecast. 
And uh, similar to anomaly detection forecasting, you know, like applies these to, uh, sorry, uh, applies essentially or trains several models, and then it selects which model is most likely to be useful uh, in order to, to make the prediction. And it gives you, you know, like essentially like a, 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 an upper bound, a lower bound, um, and, you know, with a with the probability that uh, that your uh, forecast will be within those two upper and lower bounds uh, that it uh, provides to you. So very exciting service. Uh, it's in limited availability. If you want to uh, uh, join the limited availability for forecasting or document understanding, the way to do it is by joining our beta. You should check the documentation for both services. One, uh, just to finalize my, my talk, uh, one real example of using time series analysis is cell DP, where they are essentially like, you know, there are 28 sensors on each of these uh, catamarans. And um, for every race that they have, these, these folks are um, sending 400 million inference points to us so that we can look for anomalies. And uh, I saw the other day an email that came to us where they said like, hey, we're very excited. We found this anomaly. And then we went to check. And then, yes, there was some sensor that was having some problems. So we replaced it. it you know, excellent success story. These folks want to understand what's going on because they want to win. Just like cell GP, we can be winners by applying AI capabilities, by applying AI services to our specific business needs. I hope that you learned a lot today. Uh, there, are, there is a lot more content related to AI at Cloud World. Just so you can get your hands a little bit dirty, I put a few hands-on labs here that are related to some of the topics that I have shared with you today. In there, you will have to actually write some code or, or scripts or whatever to, to use each of these capabilities so, so you can kind of go to the next level of understanding. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being with you.